hatch has opened. I'm hoping you can see the same pictures that we can. I can. It's been really exciting. They've just been rinsing down the outside of the spacecraft to make sure it's uh, got no noxious gases and liquids on it ready for the crew to come out. Right, so uh, Dr. Simeon Barber from the Space Scientist, the Open University, and uh, what the pictures that we're seeing now is this feed from SpaceX. And is that somebody has gone into the capsule to talk them through procedures, presumably? Yeah, that, that is uh, someone literally poking their head through the hatch and saying, <laughs> uh, welcome, good morning, um, welcome to Florida, and uh, yeah, enjoy that fresh air. So <laughs> yes, and the, the first person I, I'm told that they're meant to go to as soon as they get out is the, uh, the medical uh, team. I think they call it a, a flight surgeon, don't they, on board that ship. And they are, they're going to be needed to, to be checked out, sort of an initial check, but before they go into all those complicated checks that we were talking about uh, in terms of all of the, the looking at what has happened to their bodies after all that exposure to radiation and the like uh, up there. So talk us through what will be happening uh, once they emerge. Yeah, that's right. So they, they don't be surprised if we see them being helped out of the spacecraft because they're in their suits, which are designed for, um, for, for use in vacuum. Um, and they won't have, their, their bodies and joints won't have been used to feeling load on them because of the, the you know, very low gravity environment they've been in. And so, you know, just, just walking and, and wearing, bearing weight will feel strange for the first few moments. So they may be assisted. And then, yeah, they'll go through their initial checkout. Um, but they've been wearing, as you say, this, this whole suite of kind of medical experiments and kit that they've been um, sampling their bodies with. We heard about them putting tiny cameras um, up their nose, which sounds particularly unpleasant, um, <laughs> to understand the effect of the, um, the space environment on their airwaves. So lots of data to, um, to look at in the long term. But for now, I think it's just elation to be back down on Earth. Yes, yeah, so one of them has an implant, don't they? Um, I, I, I'm not too sure about that. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not across that, I'm afraid. OK, I'm sure I heard somebody earlier talking about how maybe one of them had an implant. Uh, so this is really, you know, so very in, uh, invasive stuff, isn't, isn't it, this testing? It goes to a whole different level. Here we go. They are, they're waving at the camera, looking very happy. Very pleased with themselves. They are very pleased that it all has gone so very well. Oh, yeah, it's very important that we get a photo before they come out. Um, and just to say, um, Simeon, this has been so successful, this flight, hasn't it? And just talk us through all the first. I mean, this is the first spacewalk, wasn't it, by non-government astronauts. And that in itself is something. But there's so many other firsts on this mission, aren't there? Yeah, this, this mission has, has set a whole um, new standard for private space flight. So it's gone higher than the um, SpaceX has ever taken astronauts before. Um, it actually went up three times higher than the, the orbit of the International Space Station so that it could dip into the radiation belts to understand the effect of that on the human body. Um, it then came down a little bit in orbit and then performed this most amazing space flight in which all four astronauts were actually exposed to the vacuum environment. Two of them stayed inside the craft and two took their turns in coming out, having a look at the Earth, you know, just, just the most amazing sight. We saw, saw all, the, all this in live video. And they also were testing the suits. So we saw them moving their arms and doing kind of strange strange dances and, and movements with their arms, checking the mobility of their suits. And what, what really has made this possible is that the spacecraft we see there that they're sitting in now, the capsule, will be reused again. And actually, it's the exact capsule that Jared Isaacman, the, the funder of this mission and the commander that we saw on the shot just now, it's the same craft he flew in exactly three years ago to the day. To the day. And it, it will be recommissioned now for a future flight. It's extraordinary, that, isn't it? Because of what that capsule has gone through, the heat it's been exposed to, and as you were saying, all those um, uh, you know, gases and everything that's on the outside of it, that it will still be viable. Um, we should mention who is on board. Jared Isaacman is this uh, billionaire. He's, he's the only one, actually, who's been in space before, isn't he? That's right. There was talk about this being a rookie crew, which... It is technically correct, but they've gone through an amazing amount of training to, to you know, to, to make them um, able to do this. So there's um, an ex um, kind of Air Force test pilot, that's Scott, 
and then Sarah and Anna are SpaceX employees who previously have been operating these space missions from the ground. And who better to then go into space and actually operate the mission from the, the craft itself than people who've previously been responsible for, for operating from ground. So we've, we've seen you know, a really um, groundbreaking mission that's gone incredibly smoothly and has been filmed for us all to watch. It's been like a five-day movie to watch for me. For you, yes. So um, we should say, yes, yeah, Sarah Gillis, so this is the SpaceX engineer, senior engineer, who did the spacewalk with Jared Isaacman. Um, it, she's trained people to do these things, hasn't she, herself? And so nice for her to be able to, to finally do it really, for, in real, you know, for herself, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, who better now, who, who is better positioned to, to train a future generation of astronauts? And, you know, the amazing thing about Sarah is that she first joins um, SpaceX as an intern. So, right. you know, what, what, a, what an amazing story this is about um, how SpaceX has kind of opened up the possibility of, of humans going into space in a very different way to what we've seen in the past when it's been done through national agencies. Yeah, and there we go. We've seen the, the first one of them take their first steps, sort of tentative steps, and perhaps a little bit awkward in those uh, big suits that they have on, emerging from that capsule, but waving and smiling, huge smile uh, there as they are so pleased to be back uh, touching. Well, they're on a vessel, aren't they? Not on solid ground yet, but they'll, they're on this vessel. And then I understand they're going to be taken by helicopter uh, back to uh, their, well, to go and have all of those tests done, of course, and then to go and be reunited with their friends and family. Um, so it takes quite a long time to get them all out, doesn't it? Just a, a very slow process. I suppose, as you say, you know, their bodies will be feeling very strange right now. That's right. And, um, you know, this is, this is a professional operation. So it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like getting off a plane, but not quite the same. You know, you, you're, you're responsible for this spacecraft. You want to make sure that it's in... You, you leave it healthy, um, it needs shutting down correctly. We're seeing just there the, yeah. the, the control <laughs> panels, and here they are. Look you know, at them, they're, they're so happy. They must be elated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, standing perfectly well. I mean, five days doesn't sound like a huge amount of time, but in terms of the, the being weightless for those five days, just exactly what does that do to your body? Um, the thing I like most is I heard that it stops your, jo your joints aching. So with my footballer's <laughs> knees, I think I'd quite like that. But right. effectively, you're not, you're not bearing load. Yeah. And that, that's, that actually means that you, you know, your muscles stop working in the same way. And one of the reasons for this flight is to kind of understand how that does affect um, human bodies. So if you're not exercising every day, you tend to lose that muscle mass, as we know on Earth. But when you're not even working against the forces of gravity, then the effect is much more severe. So SpaceX's vision is for kind of long term missions you know, to the moon to Mars. This is the first kind of baby steps there, um, you know, almost literally as, as we walk, seeing them walking across there. Yeah. But all of this is building up that, that kind of knowledge base of what it would be like to, to do a long term space flight and how it affects the human body. Yes, because when they're in the International Space Station, they have to exercise for at least two hours a day, isn't it? And when we say exercise, I mean, it, it is strange kind of exercise, isn't it, when you're weightless? Yeah, so it's it's kind of against resistance machines, um, you know, like like you'd see in a gym, I guess, you know, on a on a bike or or um, you know that kind of thing where you 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 actively working in against resistance to to put um, loads into your joints and to keep them keep them active, keep the muscles strong. So this is the last one emerging now. Um, they are all out. They are all walking around quite easily. Big hugs. Big smiles, everybody waving. There's, nobody seems to be having any really obvious uh, physical challenge at the moment. They're looking good, aren't they? And, and that's testament, I guess, to their training, to their fitness, um, the ergonomics of the, of the craft. Um, yeah, it yeah. looked a little grubby, so they'll clean that up and that will go again, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, look, Robbie is putting it mildly. And now off to, to, the, to do all of these tests and first of all to, to meet the, the flight surgeon uh, and that 
Um, and that is really, I suppose, that marks the end. This is the, 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 the mission is completed now, isn't it, in terms of um, the actual mission itself. But it, there is going to be so long for them analysing all of this data that they've brought back and, and having all of these tests done on them physically. How long are they monitored physically for now after this? Because that's a large part of this, isn't it? Talking about what we were saying earlier about the impact of the radiation on their bodies and, and everything else. How long will they be monitored now? I think they'll be monitored in an ongoing process now. So as you said, there's the initial checks just to check everyone, everyone's OK, which, which they certainly look fine from here. Um, and then over the coming days and weeks, they'll be looking how the body reacclimatizes itself to, to life on Earth, um, you know, in, the, in the, the gravity environment and the breathing environment we have here. It is the end of the mission, but there are three missions in this series, and, and the people, I think, will already start looking forward to the the next two, we don't really know the sort of people into space. And and the word Mars. Mars, yes. <laughs> so um, Elon Musk's vision is that um, this this kind of space technology could put humans on the moon to have a kind of a research base, but to use that as a stepping stone to develop the technologies, which would, in his words, build a city on Mars. Um, Lots and lots of technical challenges there and technologies to develop. There are also some wider issues, such as um, what would be the impact of putting humans on Mars. Um, just recently, we, we've had discoveries from NASA that there are huge amounts of water trapped deep inside the uh, Martian crust. And this has implications for how there may have been life on the surface of Mars, potentially. It certainly increases that possibility. So there will be lots of um, care needed before we start sending humans to Mars. But, you know, these are important steps on that journey. OK, well, thank you so much um, for talking us through all of that and for being with us uh, as that mission uh, came, to the, came to an end there. Dr. Simeon Barber from the Open University. Really good to have you with us. So as you see, all four astronauts have now emerged from that, uh, that capsule, which is splashed down off the coast of Florida. Uh, and they are going on to have all those tests, different tests done on their bodies.